Time for this gear tray to get some resin to bring out the alcohol ink. Hang on tight. Let's see how this goes. Howdy, howdy, everyone. This is Claire Lawrence. I'm working on the next part on this gear tray. Now, to catch you up a little bit, I got a hold of a bunch of like little wooden gears. I'm not sure if it was Hobby Lobby or Michael's, but it was one of those two places. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I've gone to both of them recently, and, and now they're starting to mix up in my head a little bit. But I went and I took these little wooden uh, gears and individually painted them with a couple different tones of alcohol ink to kind of give them a rusted patina type of a look to it. And then did an alcohol wash on the tray itself and used some metallics in that. So it definitely gives it a very weathered type of look to it and of course um, with any kind of tray you want to make sure it's encapsulated in something so that it's usable I guess you don't have to but and in this case I'd like to have any art that I do in trays to be um, able to be used as a function if they they choose to so resin it is and of course you know when we use resin sometimes it gives me the opportunity to play with also dimension too so um, I'm going to do just a little bit, just to add some little to it. Um, I have some extra glitter on hand that is left over from a project. And I uh, also have a couple different colors. Uh, not sure what I was going to do at the moment in time. There was some uh, transparent purple and pink. Pink's not going to work in this case. Um, and also some more of a metallic-y kind of purple and some white let's see and I have some options of some gold too I don't think I actually use the gold in this case but I definitely wanted to use just a little bit of an accent of a color and oh yeah I had a, a mixed up a uh, rust color uh, there was a little bit of a uh, almost like a terracotta red with a chocolate gold and those two colors are from the res but something happened and it didn't quite work right so I wanted to go ahead and show this process because you know it happens sometimes we, we go to create some kind of artwork and um, somewhere in, in the line either the colors don't work or maybe the resin moves too much or something like that but I thought about editing it out, but I thought, nah, I'm going to leave it in there because I'm human, you know, and I made mistakes too. So here I am, I'm adding a little bit of the glitter into the background, and as you can see, there's so many different kinds of glitters in this. It was left over from my bling bling tray, um, and it was the stuff that came out of the tray, and it was such a huge amount that I put it to the side to use. Um... And, of course, I mixed up a really large batch of resin because I did several projects this day. And so I had it on hand. Thought I'd add a little bit. So this is the transparent purple that I was talking about earlier. And I just added a little swirl of that in there. And then I think I went in and grabbed the rust color. Or is this the white? Yep, that's the white. And the white's a mixture of Stone Coat's base tint and a Lorez white paste. Uh, there's the, the rust color. So I believe the red is the Merlot red. And then the chocolate gold mixed together to come up with this color. But what actually happened... <laughs> is I think the Merlot came out when I started moving this around and then when it worked in combination with the white it turned into this um remember silly putty <laughs> it kind of turned into that color so it's like eh so it's starting to move around a little bit I'm thinking okay maybe I need to mess with it some more and I think I just moved it around maybe a tad bit too much But it was, it was definitely starting to bug me. Oh yeah, I tried swiping. 
this is when it turned into mush. Yep, see, it's coming out. Oh dear. This is almost painful to watch. Uh, and that's how you mix colors together. <laughs> oh no. Now, if I left this alone, I might get some pretty cells, but right now, mm -hmm, not so pretty, and the gears went bye bye. So I kind of chewed on this for a little bit, and they, I haven't had too many times actually. I think there's one other time that I've removed resin before, and yeah, see, there's a couple little cells popping up. I I tried to salvage it, and I got some clear resin out, and I started dripping some clear resin on top of it to see if I can open it up a little bit and kind of push the the mauve color to the side. Let's just call it putty. And it just the more I was adding to it, the more I was realizing how much pink there was. I think I even grabbed some of the purple tint too and tried to do the same thing and that was when I was like, nope, it's not working. So I didn't get too far, fortunately, in this process. Oh, this is painful. <laughs> I think the rust color would have been good if I didn't have the Merlot in it. I think it was the red tone. That just got real happy when I mixed it with pink, with what, with white to turn it to that pink color. Let's see, what am I gonna grab next? I bet it's the purple. That's that transparent purple. Oh, you even tried swiping yet? I forgot about that. And that's making more pink. I tried swoosh, scooping it out with the the brush. And it just seemed to be going very slowly. I was hoping that I could just like skim the surface and get the color out. Ugh, that didn't work well. Okay, I'm going to stop this for a second and do a slight edit and speed up the scooping because that's not fun. Ah, uh, don't you wish life was like this that we can just speed it up and just get through those like tough jobs so quickly. At any rate, I go get a spoon and just shovel it in to my little extra excess drip cup and then I get busy and make it pretty again. Okay, I can talk now. Yay! Um, I had a Scarlet and Carrie's display of color uh, channel on in the background and I was giving them a little support. They were going live on YouTube, and um, I like to help them out. And besides that, they were doing a shout out to me, so I thought, it, you know, I definitely should show up, definitely. So thank you again, Scarlett and Carrie, for doing that. That was mighty nice of you. Okay, so you can see that there's a change in this. Um, and when I added the rust and the white together, and then I messed with it too much, and turned into kind of a pink mauve mesh, um, or mess, I should say. And that was probably the first time I think I've ever scraped off resin, or in this case, scooped it off. Um, it just was a hot mess, and I was not happy with it. And it's okay, you know, listen to your instinct. If your instinct is going, get that out of my tray, get it out of the tray. If you can tweak it and adjust it, then go right ahead. But sometimes you just need to do over. And so I, that's what we're doing. So I'm probably gonna go a little simpler. I'll, 
let, obviously some of the pink is still in there. I'm gonna add some more glitter to it, just a little bit, I think, and then um, do a little white because you can still see through it. It almost gives it, it still plays on the rusty kind of effect or that, you know, foggy, you know, things are old and that kind of thing. So I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm gonna leave that in play then. Out just a little bit more, not a lot. Scooped out quite a bit with the moth. It was, you know, kind of hard to avoid that. All right, let me torch this up real quick. Get rid of some bubbles. I've got a lot of the gears over here, some of them over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that, but just white only, cause I don't want mauve again. And then I'm going to swipe it across and see if I can pick up some of the resin to go over the white. I've been able to get cells that way, but also sometimes it just goes wispy and I'm okay with that too. So we're just gonna put a little bit over in this zone and move it around. Hopefully that is a little bit. Sometimes they say less is more. This is, I think, one of those cases. All right. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of clear resin here, get that on my spatula, and just move it around. And you can tell I'm just making, <laughs> I'm kind of making waves. But this thing is light enough. I can simply drag it. I'm gonna break up this a little bit, a little bit more. Now, very close to that point of mixing and I don't wanna mix. Okay, so we're gonna twirl this so I can move it around. Okay, get it to my extra cup. And I've got one of these kind of cups on my table. And what I do is I put like any scrapings, like if I'm doing any swipes into it. And in that case, my mauve resin went into that. <laughs> and then I'll just pour them into molds. You've seen me do uh, dry painting in the past. Uh, and I'll have some of those molds on hand. And I use that kind of stuff to fill them up little bit by little bit and that's what those are for all right let me hit this with the heat gun Settle that out just a little bit. Let's see, look at my gloves. I need a little bit of cleanup before I touch my camera. All right. So I get requests all the times for mess ups and, well, that was a mess up. That's okay. So I'm gonna get some more, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna get some more cells as this starts to set up. But see, there's a lot more depth in there. That's why I want to add the glitter. The glitter's kind of settling into the bottom. Some will sit on top of the gears. Got that um, alcohol link that's doing really neat and giving it a rusty kind of a look. I'm happy. Because there's a lot of dimension in some of these areas. And that's the part that gets me really super excited. Almost looks like a sunken ship, like some of the parts or something. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit that bell, get notified next time I put a video up. And uh, be on the lookout on my Etsy account. I might be putting some stuff up to sell. Later.